Time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson. Only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning, I'm Matthew Higgs, and joining me for City Beat is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. If you have a question you'd like to ask the mayor, give us a call at 677-8181. The Manitoba government has announced plans to boost funding for the North. They increased funding by 50% to $297,000. With all the announcements of big businesses closing in the North, do you think the province and towns will be taking a different approach for their economy and use tourism as the number one reason to improve economies? Well, I I believe tourism will play a part in the uh, economic diversification of the North. Uh, It it won't be the leading indicator. Um, and so the uh, the grant announcement is uh, is a welcome announcement to uh, Northern Manitoba, and uh, I'm sure that uh, from a per- tourism sp- perspective, and the, I think the grant amounts are up to twenty five thousand per initiative, uh, that there'll be lots of uh, local initiatives here and and throughout the north in Churchill and the Paw Flintlawn and, and others. Uh, but again, uh, as far as the diversification of uh, of uh, uh, industry and, and trade and commerce in, in the north, uh, tourism is a part of it, but we'll, we'll need to, do, to look at uh, health care and education uh, and commerce as well. Yeah, you mentioned the $25,000 grants that we available. It's going to be available to First Nations community organizations and other groups who plan to improve tourism and development. Do you think uh, anybody in Thompson will be looking at that? I would think definitely. There's a, there's a lot of tourism operators uh, in our community in regards to uh, uh, snowmobiling, snowmobiling, sledding, uh, adventure, uh, um, uh, trails, and things like that. So I, I'm sure that uh, organizations will be, will be applying, and, and we would support any of the applications. I got to ask, of course, uh, is there any updates on either the Port of Churchill or Toco Industries at this time? Actually, I was just out on a conference call this morning uh, with the Northern uh, Group, and uh, we continue to, to work with the Western Diversification uh, file in regards to the federal government. Uh, we are uh, just recently sent off a letter to the, the Premier uh, to discuss uh, the issue at hand. And so uh, things are moving along. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, it's a slow process, unfortunately, for those affected uh, directly by, by the job loss. Uh, we'll we'll uh, not see any uh, uh, immediate, uh, uh, I guess, uh, solution, but uh, rest assured we, we are working uh, hard uh, with the federal government and, and with the provincial government to, uh, to see if we can come to some sort of resolution to, uh, to move this forward both on the, on the rail system and also on the, uh, the port as well. And how cooperative have they been, the provincial and the federal governments? Uh, the federal government uh, has uh, stepped up in regards to their obligations uh, and negotiations that uh, had had happened previously with Omnitrax. Uh, the province uh, just uh, was in Churchill on Monday uh, making the announcement in regards to the tourism initiatives. Uh, we will wait to see uh, the effect of their uh, proposed policy of Yes North, which is for e- economic development in the north. Uh, Bell and MTS was also on Monday, has announced they will be expanding broadband communication infrastructure in the town of Churchill. How much do you think they'll help the town? Well, I, from what I've read, uh, locally it, it will improve the uh, the speed of, um, by about 20 times. So uh, anybody that's uh, an avid user of, of the Internet uh, uh, and everything that's included with that will, will certainly appreciate that. And, and f- from a business perspective, uh, we, we deal in a electronic world today, so any, any uh, uh, consistency and delivery of that service uh, would certainly help uh, any business that's located uh, in the north, for sure. And there was a recently a great article about the Port of Churchill, basically saying that the Canadian government has kind of abandoned the town, a bit, many reasons for the government to be there would be for shipping and strategic importance. What do you think personally? Do you think the Canadian government has abandoned that town or no? Well, I think that basically there was a change in direction back in 1997 when they uh, they owned the port and operated as a port authority, and then uh, chose to sell it off to to Omnitrax, uh, and followed by the uh, the rail as well. Um, is there a change in priorities? Uh, I, I would think uh, there seems to be a change in that, in that the the uh, the ports of importance are east and west, and and the north is being uh, ignored uh, for uh, for some time, and so I think that. Uh, the group that we're part of right now as far as the northern uh, representatives and that are lobbying the federal government and the provincial government are, are uh, re- restating the importance of the Port of Churchill, uh, not only as a shipping centre, uh, which, which would be an economic driver, but also as a, as a sovereign uh, a point, a point of security for, uh, for northern Canada uh, and also um, uh, supply routes for, uh, for further north as well. So it's, uh, it's a very big, uh, important port. It's the only deep water port in Canada and uh, it should be maintained, and, and uh, we'll see where we go with it. 
The Thompson RCMP, in conjunction with the North District Crest and Street Reach, initiated Project Home Deliver last weekend, which located 14 children and brought them to their caregivers, help high-risk children avoid exploitation. What do you think of the RCMP partnering up with these groups to help high-risk children and develop friendship or relationships with those children? It's a, it's a great uh, initiative, and it, it's uh, modeled after the Street Reach uh, program in Winnipeg, uh, and they had assistance from uh, from uh, forces in Winnipeg uh, up here in, in Thompson. So any time that, that you can... Uh, help children who uh, uh, are in uh, non-normal circumstances in regards to family life and structure and that uh, from from making mistakes and choices uh, and and help them out in supporting them uh, as they as they go through uh, their their uh, life decisions uh, hopefully uh, kids can be pointed in the right direction and, and uh, find their ways and, and become productive and and uh, gain the benefit of, of uh, their support system so a uh, great initiative um, again there's lots of kids at risk um, and uh, this initiative certainly helped out on, on the weekend. There's been discuss some discussions that the COPP might be starting up in Thompson. What do you think of that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's needed in every community uh, in, in Manitoba. And this, there's always kids at risk. Uh, there's always a headline of, of children missing or runaways and things like that. So uh, these types of programs uh, help in, in uh, finding the kids, uh, making sure they're not in harm's way, but also uh, providing support in uh, making some, uh, some life-changing decisions that, uh, that may affect them uh, down the road. Isn't the CSOs basically the same thing, though, at the moment? Uh, no, not really. Uh, the CSOs are basically uh, community safety officers. There's some uh, uh, assistance with the RCMP in regarding uh, uh, locating uh, lost children or, or basically kids that have broke curfew. Uh, but basically the CSO uh, program is more downtown orientated uh, to deal with the social issues of downtown. But uh, when called upon, they certainly assist the RCMP in, in the, the child situation as well. Uh, there has been a blockage at on Highway 6 for what you said a few weeks now. Uh, I got word it's about the disagreement of OCN fishers and trappers in Manitoba High Joe, and we do know that this, we don't know how long this will continue, but the long weekend is a day away, and many people will be driving down that highway over the next day. What do you advise to the people that if they do approach that blockade? Well, just from a driving perspective, uh, uh, be aware, aware of your surroundings. I know that uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was uh, driving down, uh, the signage wasn't quite uh, uh, adequate to see uh, that the blockade was there. So it comes up uh, upon you pretty quick. It's, it's north of Grand Rapids, just so people know that uh, that it's probably 10 to 15 miles north of Grand Rapids on Highway 6. Uh, and just be aware, be respectful. Um, it's a, um, uh, I, I would say, a, a, a casual blockade in the sense of uh, the avid traveler, as I was, uh, I, was I wasn't deter detained at all. It was uh, basically uh, slowed down and drove through the, the blockade and, and moved on. So I guess just uh, from a highway perspective and travel perspective, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of, of people on the highway and, and uh, drive with caution and courteous and, and be respectful. And what do you think of the uh, disagreement there with the OCN and Manitoba Hydro? Really, don't have any comment. Uh, it's out without a, out of our jurisdiction. It's a it's a an issue between OCN uh, and Manitoba Hydro, and so we'll leave it to those two bodies to figure it out. Uh, some people around uh, Thompson have noticed that people don't really clean up after the dog here, and we're some of caller was wondering who cleans it up if no one else does. <laughs> in a lot of cases, it doesn't get cleaned up, but uh, for the most part, there is a bylaw in place in regards to pet owners, and pet owners are responsible for uh, any uh, any um, uh, I guess anything left by a pet. Uh, it's it's up to the uh, to the pet owner to uh, to put it in a plastic bag or scoop it up and, and put it in the trash bag. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, so we just encourage people uh, who to be responsible pet owners, uh, and uh, they are your pets. Uh, uh, their their uh, their belongings that they leave behind are, are your responsibility. So be be respectful of other people's property, uh, and uh, and clean it up. And schools just around the corner, starting on Wednesday for all the students. Uh, any words for students and teachers before they begin their 2016-17 year? Well, I'm sure a lot of parents uh, have happy uh, smiles on their faces. Uh, it's been a long summer uh, in some cases, probably an enjoyable summer, but uh, always the first day of school is, uh, is always an exciting one for uh, for both the teachers and, and students. Uh, just a reminder to... Uh, 
uh, have fun and enjoy yourself coming back, but also be aware, uh, again, of your surroundings perspective and that the school safety zones, uh, speed zones are in place uh, as of September 1st. And so from a child's perspective, be aware of your surroundings, look both ways before you cross the street, make eye contact with the, with the drivers if you can, make yourself safe because in a lot of cases, kids are quite small and drivers may not see them or be distracted. So, uh, and, and also being distracted, and, and I'm speaking more to the teenagers and, and with this Pokemon phenomenon, I had the incident the other day. Again, a child, a uh, teenager, stepped out onto the street, uh, one step onto the street before he realized he was in the street because he had his face in his, in his cell phone. So just be aware, don't be distracted, and uh, there'll be lots of kids around next week uh, from dri driver's perspective, so uh, be aware of your surroundings. And remember, school zones, 30 kilometers per hour now. Absolutely, for all, em all elementary schools. Mm -hmm. And do you watch any CFL football? Absolutely. So this weekend's obviously a big one uh, for the Labor Day Classic. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, well, my heart says uh, the Riders because I was born in Saskatchewan Ooh. and the Rider Pride. Uh, but uh, the reality is I think the Bombers are on a roll and, and they'll probably pull it out. Uh, but the, it's uh, Rider Pride for me, so go Riders. We're getting cheers uh, here in the <laughs> control room. <laughs> go Blue, that's what i got to say. Uh, that's it for this edition of City Beat. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, make sure to join us every Thursday at 11.30 to find out what's happening around the city and City Hall. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Matthew Higgs. City Beat will be back next Thursday morning.